Well, if you wish to relish mutton keema without a goat having to give up a pound of flesh, there is an alternative, plant-based meat. It's as nutritious as meat, tastes like meat, feels like meat, but is not meat. A whole host of startups are turning meat eating into a more palatable experience. Besides being cruelty free, it's also eco friendly as animal agriculture is a leading driver of ecosystem loss and environmental degradation worldwide. As veganism gains in popularity with cel celebrities including superstar athletes like Serena Williams and Virat Kohli advocating the benefits of a vegan diet, the trend is catching on. In the US, plant based meat company Beyond Meat went public in 2019. The maker of meat Burgers Impossible Foods is planning to follow shortly is what we're given to understand. Not only consumers, investors are also turning conscious as countries target net zero emissions and food security. Last year, a record $3 billion was pumped into the alternative protein sector. That's more than what the sector raised in a single year ever before. Invents in smart protein startups in the age Pacific region have gone up by six times, showing that the epicenter of this innovation is starting to shift to Asia. That's according to a Good Food Institute report. But surely the demands of a hungry Indian are not easily met. So how are India's smart protein startups innovating in helping consumers turn vegan or at least look at other alternatives without asking for a sacrifice of the meat-eating experience? We find out on today's episode of Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship, I'm Shireen Pan. Joining me today is Abhishek Sina, the co-founder and CEO of Good Dot. Also with us, Abhay Rangan, the founder of Good Milk, and Varun Deshpande, the managing director at Good Food Institute India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on Young Turks. Abhishek, my first question to you. And you know, I was looking at your history. You first toyed with the idea of smart proteins in 2003, but formally you started to put this idea together in 2013. So in many ways you were ahead of the curve, at least here in India. What made you think that this could be a viable business idea? So Shireen, thanks uh, for the opportunity. So basically the thing was distilled by the parents, you know, do something larger than yourself. So that was a primary drive. So I was a meat eater ex-meat eater, but I was also an animal lover. In my final year of engineering, I came across a study sponsored by the Dutch government on tissue culture-based meat. So that told me that here is an idea. There are millions and millions of consumers, potential consumers like me. If given a choice, the right taste and the right price, they would prefer to have a non-violent meat on their plate. So this is what really fascinated me. And it was in 2013 uh, when I finally formed a team and we worked together to, on this project, which has gone uh, to the current situation right now. So we are quite happy how we have progressed since then. Uh, Abhay, as well as Abhishek, I want to understand from you, what are the big challenges that you're seeing today? And Abhishek, let me start by asking you that. You know, Varun alluded to some of them uh, and also the need to sort of build out this uh, ecosystem uh, much more robustly. But outside of the, the R&D spend, which of course is your big cost at this point in time, what are the big friction points? I think, Shireen, it's a, it's a awareness, creating awareness uh, for a new category, not just a product or a brand. So I think that's, uh, and also changing of habits, right? I think these are critical aspects. Uh, interestingly enough, our experience is unlike the experience of any other players in the space of plant-based meat across the globe. Uh, with our distribution partner being RCM, our products are now being sold in brick and mortar formats, around 8,000 stores in Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Jammu Kashmir, Nagaland, Kerala, all across India. So it's not just the metros, which is very intuitive that the, you know, flexitarians and, you know, uh, the upwardly mobile client from the metros are open to consume uh, plant-based meat, but a villager in Bihar is open to consume meat. We are supplying to them. So that gives us a lot of hope that, you know, India is a dark horse of the plant-based meat space. The need is there, it is latent but it will manifest and when it does manifest, it will be a very, very strong market across the globe. Okay. Uh, India is the dark horse and there is latent demand waiting to be exploited. The point that uh, Varun was making there about the fact that while you are catering to domestic demand and hoping that domestic demand grows, there is a market available outside of India and you are starting to cater to that. In fact, if I see uh, where you are being sold, Canada, Dubai, South Africa, Mauritius, Nepal, Singapore. So how large are the global aspirations? What are you targeting? Uh, it's, it's quite large, uh, Shireen. Like, we have been validated at quite a few global 
platforms. So that showed uh, a young brand from India can compete with the very best brands across the globe. Our products have a strength of being shelf stable at ambient temperature with a shelf life of 12 months. So that really helps us push the products across the global market at a fraction of a cost than a frozen product. Yeah. So that really opens up a lot of potential opportunities. And that is why, you know, I feel that in India, companies can really come up with a solution which not just takes care of the Indian market, but also the global market and where the numbers are phenomenal and it's already matured. So I think both sides, Indian market as well as international markets are there for the taking for the companies who are into this space. I don't think that we would have seen the market take off in the manner in which it has if it wasn't a viable switch that the consumer had to make as opposed to a sacrifice. And that's the point that I want to take forward with Abhishek. Abhishek, you know, take me through what, uh, how much of your bandwidth, time, resources are really going into the R&D aspect of the business. Because as uh, Varun was pointing out, you know, the consumer wants to feel good at the same time and care about the environment and so on and so forth. But, you know, they also want to enjoy the sensory experience. Uh, and who are you targeting at this point in time? I mean, uh, are you targeting the flexitarian? Are you targeting the vegetarian? How is the market being segmented? So, Shireen, uh, you know, uh, that's a very important fundamental question. So our approach as the major players in the space is we are targeting the meat eaters and the flexitarians because there are people, if given them the right taste and the right price, they are willing to give it a shot. So that is where we are coming from. Uh, so the market is responding fantastically. R&D is extremely critical. You know, you will find that there are, you know, global majors like Unilever, Nestle's, Tyson Foods, all of them are entering into the space. But there are no plug and play format in plant-based meat because mm -hmm. it is very R&D intensive every company comes up with different product. So the winner will be uh, the company which brings the product which tastes like meat and is at a discount to meat. So I think that is where the R&D, our efforts are ongoing. We have worked very hard towards uh, developing our product lines and the R&D is continuous. So that is one of our significant cost centers for us. Yes, I would imagine that that is going to be a significant cost. But Abhishek, you know, I want to understand from you, you're up against the big boys. Uh, you know, you talked about Unilever, Nestle and so on and so forth. In that context, then, uh, look at the size and strength of their balance sheet versus a startup like yours. You know, how, you know, how do you compete? Passion. Just passion. We are out there. We don't take no for an answer. We breathe in, you know, this movement of, you know, saving billions of animals. Those lives are counting on us and we are not taking no for an answer neither from the big boys, neither from the consumers. We are going to create a product which meets the expectation of an average consumer. And as they say, we'll give them an offer they cannot refuse. So that is what our, we are working towards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, make an offer that they cannot refuse.